Next, let's take a look at visualization. What is visualization in data analytics? It is nothing but graphic representation of the data and information. Graphical in a pictorial form. The efforts which are made to help a user understand the significance of data by putting it in visual context. Always a picture is much easier to grasp, much easier to comprehend than if we have to read volumes of text. Correct? Trend. A trend is easily identifiable. Uh, correlations, they are better understood when it is represented pictorially than in a text form. Right? Easier to comprehend. So what did, uh, what did the year professor say? He said that excellent data visual, visual, visualizations consist of what? Complex ideas which are communicated with clarity, precision and efficiency. With clarity, precision and efficiency. Followed? Different types of diagrams are suited for different purposes like bar chart or column chart will help you to observe relationships and make comparisons. A pie chart gives you, shows you parts of a complete whole. Maps will help you to share geographical data. Correct? Now, when you have these data visualization tools, today the modern uh, modern tool is a, is a digital dashboard is so popular. So what we are saying is data visualization tools may provide for interactive capabilities. We can enter data and see the changes. Real-time data can be entered and see and we can see what will be the effect. Right? We can do a what-if type analysis if there are interactive capabilities. Correct? Business intelligence tools include the capability of grouping various visualization options onto a digital dashboard. Right? Now, what does this do? These will allow them to interact with the real time data. Actual data we can link and quickly see what might otherwise be a lot of data. See, otherwise, we have to plot through a lot of data. What you want to include on the dashboard is, of course, entirely up to the manager. There may be graphs, whatever. Are there any, any needs of presentation? Sometimes many kinds of data are presented in one digital dashboard. Why do you use visualization? Because, because it makes data easier to understand. It makes it easier to remember. Right? Four facts are, uh, are, are displayed and there is no jargon. Relationships, patterns can be understood very fast. Unknown, unknown things, outliers, etc. very quickly obvious. Since everything is so much clearer, then we can, the people, the users who are viewing it, who are presenting it, they ask better questions and therefore make better decisions. These are just some visualization options. You just see, see a few pictures of them so that you know why, how it, it helps. Right? Maybe table, scatter plot, dot plot, box plot, bar chart, pie chart, line chart, bubble chart, histogram, character diagram, and a fish film diagram. This is used mainly for quality culture. Anyway, a table, of course, we are arranging ID number, first name, last name, job code, salary, phone number, just data in a structured form. That's all in a table. This may be used in some kind of research, communication, whatever. It's just a form of a structured data table. A scatter plot, there are two things. There's an x-axis and there is a y-axis. X-axis shows the the, 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 the amount of kilometers run per week, this is the weight. We're trying to check uh, weight versus exercise. So, so this will indicate uh, 83 kgs of weight, right? Um, runs maybe, I don't know what is, uh, 5 kilometers per week. Right, less exercise here. Yeah. But uh, Here the weights are high, right? Because this indicates what people with uh, higher uh, weight and no exercise, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, just to show you that they can be related. A dot plot of course, statistical chart. This actually should be one person. Zero hours. Let's assume this is hours of video games watched. Zero hours, one person. Six hours, two persons. One person. Watch for seven hours, I don't know if it's in a week, 
whatever. This is just two people. Right? Now, this is simple enough to understand, but it works only for a small set of data, small uh, number of values, not for large data sets. Right? You cannot because it will be you can't figure out. This is a box plot. It is also called a box and whiskers. Box and whiskers. Here, actually, everything is divided into four. Each of these represents a twenty-five percent. Graphically depicting uh, groups of numerical data being the quartiles. You know what this means, students. Suppose I take uh, this is what actually the time slept, number of hours slept on Monday. What is this? This is the highest figure, nine. This is four. This means on a Monday, uh, maximum hours of sleep for uh, somebody might have got would be nine hours, and four hours is the minimum. Twenty-five percent of the people get nine to eight hours of sleep. Uh, maybe twenty-five percent get seven and a half to eight. Another twenty-five percent get maybe six to seven and a half, or is it five and a half to six, six and whatever. And another twenty-five percent get. Four to six hours of sleep. Follow up and you know, not interpreting that perfectly, but this is what it shows. Yeah, take a Friday, but Friday the maximum hours of sleep is a person, a person, a person. Uh, then there are people who get the maximum hours left is eleven. There's somebody who will have and the minimum, and the minimum would be six. But see the the the, the whole graph. On Friday the sleep is much more than on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday midweek is low, so is Wednesday. Friday and Saturday the sleep seems to be good. More hours of sleep overall. Are you following, students? If I take a Friday, for example, uh, ten to eleven hours. Twenty-five percent people ten to eleven hours of sleep. Twenty-five percent nine to eleven hours of sleep. Twenty-five percent eight to nine hours of sleep. Another twenty-five percent six to eight hours of sleep. So look, this is how it is expressed. A bar chart, ice cream scoop, number of scoops in May maybe fifty plus, in June hundred and twenty whatever, in July nearly 350 and so on and so forth in different months state of ice Now here for example if it's presented like this it's also a bar chart so this is for different products the pears, bananas, apples and oranges. The shelf life one color represents a shelf life the other one represents food stock. So looking at it it's easy we can make a comparative analysis also right. <coughs> Pie chart, a simple pie chart. How much? How much of maybe the 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 the, the, the money, the salary, uh, is being spent on uh, different purposes on housing, savings, food, right, transportation. Thirty-five percent maybe I am looking. This is the percentage looking on housing, right? Twelve percent is safe. Percent for food, another fifteen for transportation, and so this is a pie chart. A line chart would be depicting like this. What is this showing? Dolphins, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Wildlife population, which is being predicted for the for the bears, for dolphins, and for bears. So line chart also tracks changes of trends over time, shows relationship between two or more variables. You have a bubble chart interesting three dimensions of data are presented, right? Each entity with its triplet of associated data is plotted as a disk that expresses two of the VI values to the disk sex by the patient. So you have the average team size and the average medals per athlete, right? And uh, this is uh, 50. <coughs> Is the average medal so the size is depicted by the size of the of the circle, right? And the third is the size of the particular bubble. With that, this bubble chart can also be made to move. But well, that becomes a very interesting chart. <coughs> A 
a histogram again it's like a bar chart but it is continuous 0 to 10 11 to 20 21 to 30 31 to 40 41 to 50 what about it is uh, <coughs> okay. uh, distribution uh, the probability distribution of a continuous is why it's called a continuous gradient right uh, differs from a graph uh, bar graph this is the bar graph leads to gradient and histogram so okay. I mean it you could show one or you could show two. So this this would be continuous that that is uh, there are there are let's say uh, zero or one incident of zero to ten. 4, 11 to 20, 8 of 31 to 30, 6 of 31 to 40, so on and so forth. Right? Mm. A Pareto diagram, a Pareto chart actually first to arrange that contains both bars and a line graph where the individual values are represented in uh, descending order. So these bars, this is in descending order and this is a cumulative. A cumulative. Fishbone diagram. In, in, in business process improvement etc. we might think to discuss the fishbone diagram. They are causal diagrams, cause, cause of a defect. This is a fish's head. The, the, the head it represents the, redu the, 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 the defect, the reduced competitiveness, right? And these are the, the, the bones, the fish bones. They will tell you the reasons, the causes for this. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and these, uh, there may be further marks, further ribs. Which tell you the other uh, other reasons. So these is management, process, staff, corporate, external, and the ribs will tell you the reasons for them. Okay. Use largely in product design, quality defect prevention for identifying potential factors causing an overall defect. Each cause of the imperfection is a source of relation to skin students. If this thing is given to us in a text form, we have to read, analyze, put it. But this is in a pictorial form. It becomes so much easier for us to grasp. Follow the, 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 the effect of visualization. What is the limitation of data visualization? Oversimplification of data. Right? Human limitation of an algorithm. After all, it's based on human inputs. And that can be fundamental. So, so when there is data, it should not be compromised. Some data we should, should not be over simplification of data. Be careful there. Of course, an algorithm, human limitation is always there. Over reliance on visuals, they are never conclusive. Be careful. Again, be alert. Actually, any report, it's not just with visualization. One has to be wary. One has to <coughs> pay attention. Manipulated, there could be manipulation to present a biased picture. What are the best practices for data visualization? Ensure you have the target, uh, target. See who is the target and what is the decision to be made. Plan accordingly. Right? Choose the correct visual. Different things of a different purposes. Different charts of a different purposes. See what is most effective. Provide a context. Provide a context which is always better. Up, uh, uh, say for example, if performance you are talking about, there should be some a percentage change. Uh, plus, uh, maybe you, you could mention a percentage change. That tells us it could be five percent improvement, ten percent improvement, or uh, etc. Or or some other standard to which it can be compared. So we understand, right? Keep things very simple. That uh, that is of course another rule. We don't want to complicate by a diagram. The whole idea of visualization is to make it simple, easier to understand. Clarity must be there, right? Uh, simple and digestible, they sometimes use the word snackable, create maximum and design for uh, for user engagement. This was a mistake, students. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, user engagement, they should be engaged, right? People should want to read it, we look at it. It's not that they see it and fall asleep if we work with it, right? Of course, that is what digital dashboards do, right? Make it very, very interesting so that you can, you can uh, keep 
key data see immediately what are the effects.